live, getting results. This is News 6 at Noon. Now at noon, new details on the investigation into a toddler's death. What we just learned about the arrest of the boy's mother. But first, a man's body was found on the side of a road this morning. What we just learned about the victim. Thanks for joining us this noon. I'm Bridget Ellison. And I'm Justin Mormouth. We have been following this death investigation since it broke overnight. That body was found on the side of Boggy Creek Road at Airport, Dr Airport Park Drive, right near Orlando International Airport. Sashel Saunders has more on what investigators revealed about the man who died. That body was found in this portion of Boggy Creek Road. You can see tire tracks here in the grass and drivers tell us that overnight it's very dark here in the area. It's so dark, there's hardly any lights. Cars backed up along Boggy Creek Road, stopped in the night by an officer barricade just blocks away as a body. Someone found the person laying there just before two in the morning. Kind of surprised and shocked. There's really nothing out there, so kind of uh, daunting. Yeah. Deputies say the victim is 40-year-old Jose Rivera Rivera. They said his body had, quote, obvious trauma, but stopped short of saying how he died or if there were any suspects. Nearby, truckers who couldn't get to their vehicles waited six to seven hours overnight while deputies investigated. They're now concerned it happened so close. And I'm here out late a lot um, doing work on the trucks and stuff, so... It's, uh, it's really scary, to be honest with you, and it's unexpected. If you know anything about what happened here, you can call Orange County deputies or you can call Crime Line anonymously at 1-800-423-TIPS. Reporting in Orange County, Sashel Saunders, News 6. Now to new details on the Largo mother who was arrested in the death of her two-year-old son. Overnight, 21-year-old Sharice Stinson was booked into jail. She's facing first-degree murder charges in the death of her son, Jordan Beliveau, who was reported missing over the weekend. The toddler was found yesterday dead in a wooded area near a sports complex in Largo, which is just north of St. Pete. Police there held a press conference on the investigation a short time ago. According to the detectives, uh during her interview, she would constantly change what she was saying based on the line of questioning. There was no feeling with them that there was any remorse, only her attempting to escape the reality of, of the story by making things up as she went. Police say Stinson admitted to placing the boy's body in the woods. An autopsy has been scheduled to learn more about the toddler's death. And now what remains of Gordon continues to move inland this hour after making landfall last night. The storm is being blamed for at least one death. And News 6 Morning Anchor Kirsten O'Connor is here now with more. Kirsten. Yeah, Bridget, a child was killed in Pensacola after a tree limb fell onto a mobile home. The storm has been downgraded to a tropical depression. You'll hear Troy talk more about that in a moment, but the threat is not over. Flooding remains the biggest threat for millions of Americans as the storm moves inland. Up to a foot of rain is expected in some areas, and that could produce flash flooding. The brunt of the storm, though, slammed Dauphin Island, Alabama, where gusts topped toppled trees, flooded buildings, ripped apart billboards, and sent large waves crashing along the shore. This could be just our first taste of what's to come. You'll keep hearing this, but peak hurricane season is days away. Justin. And thank you for that. And as we take a live look at our weather here in central Florida over downtown Orlando, drier because of Gordon. But mm -hmm. we wish those folks the best who are in the storm's path. Yeah, and unfortunately, as we enjoy this drier weather, many could be dealing with flooding, Troy. Oh, yeah. And the risk of severe storms there in Alabama. The tornado outbreak, a real concern as we head into the next few hours. Even our panhandle here for Panama City back over into Mobile Bay in Alabama. You can see all of that moisture streaming in from the Gulf of Mexico. Again, this has weakened to a tropical depression. It will continue to weaken as it moves to the north, but we will see most of our moisture sucked away as that moves off to the north and northwest. Still, though, a few pop up showers right now, but these will move quickly off to the west and will dry out considerably for the next few hours. There's some rain popping up for Oviedo, Altamont Springs, Orlando, Apopka, up to Deltona, and then a few up in Flagler County. Temperatures in the mid and upper 80s. It's 85 and Orlando 87 at Cocoa Beach. We're headed up to 92 at 3 o'clock with a 30% coverage of rain. Guys, coming up, we'll talk about higher rain chances and a new hurricane, and including two more storms after that. What will they mean in the coming weeks? We'll detail it straight ahead.
Thanks, Troy. New at noon, a Citizens Review Board in Orlando is calling for an officer to resign because of what he posted on Facebook. The comment was filled with profanities that some say spread racist rhetoric. It was posted last year shortly after two Kissimmee police officers were shot and killed in the line of duty. Now some people say Officer Robert Shellhorn should not be on patrol. After an internal investigation with the Orlando Police Department, Shellhorn was suspended for 80 days, 80 hours without pay. But the Citizens Review Board says that's not enough. Officer Shellhorn uh, is an officer who has made disparaging comments about African Americans, calling us useless, useless savages. Uh, he has referred to uh, professional athletes as overpaid thugs, such as Colin Kaepernick. Shellhorn told an internal affairs investigator his post was never intended to be racist. The Citizens Review Board is calling on him to resign from his position. Right now, Brett Kavanaugh is back on Capitol Hill facing a second day of questioning from lawmakers as he looks to become the next Supreme Court justice. And this is a live look at the hearing going on right now. President Trump's nominee facing the high court and facing some stiff questioning from Democrats who first sought to delay Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings altogether. Now, this morning, the Supreme Court nominee faced questions about whether he could rule against a president who appointed him. Kavanaugh responded, no one is above the law. We'll have the latest on the confirmation hearing on News 6 starting at 4. New details at noon as the investigation continues into what caused this crane to collapse onto a Baldwin Park home. News 6 just spoke with the owner of Bale Brothers Crane and Rigging. He believes the wet ground caused the crane to give way. You can see it sliced right through the middle of that home on Lower Park Road yesterday. It took hours to remove the crane. Workers with Gold Key Roofing say Bale Brothers was delivering shingles to the job when the crane fell. The family who lives at the house wasn't at home at the time. New information now at noon on a crash that happened at a gas station. A truck slammed into a gas pump at 7-Eleven on Lee Road near I-4 late last night. We broke the story on News 6 this morning. You can see the pump fell onto a car, and the owner of the car says he just bought it hours before this happened. And the cashier overreacts, just like, oh, and I turn around and I just see this big, huge truck and the gas tank falling on the car. Troopers say they're not investigating the crash. The drivers exchanged information with each other. Tonight, leaders in Satellite Beach are set to ask the state for help combating cancer-causing chemicals in the water. The city has said that it does not have guidelines on what's considered dangerous levels of those chemicals. We're told the council is looking to pass a resolution asking the state to set those standards and to provide funding to address the problems. Now, News 6 told you last month, test results showed traces of the chemicals in several different groundwater wells. Tonight's meeting starts at 7 o'clock. And News 6 continues to stay on top of Florida's dirty water situation. You can find our comprehensive coverage right now on a special section of our website. Just head to clickorlando.com slash water. Right now, thousands of Disney workers are voting on an historic new contract with the theme park. The new contract raises the minimum wage at the park to $15 an hour over the next three years. That's a 46% increase over the current minimum wage. It passed. Workers in the six unions also get a $1,000 bonus. In exchange, Disney gets to use more part-time workers and expand random drug testing. The deal covers more than half of the 70,000 workers at Disney World. Union leaders are urging those workers to approve it. Voting will last through tomorrow, and New 6 will let you know what happens. New at noon now, a gift for teaching, getting a big donation for both students and teachers across Central Florida. And it's all thanks to Publix. Two giant Publix trailers delivered hundreds of school supplies for the organization this morning. A gift for teaching teamed up for the grocery stores, tools for back to school campaign to provide supplies for students in need. You know how loyal Publix customers are. Those customers have donated money um, during a three-week campaign at public stores throughout Central Florida because they know that in turn that is going to provide school supplies to a gift for teaching um, that will support more than 200,000 students in need in our community. And you might remember just last month, News 6 teamed up with a gift for teaching and with the help from our viewers, we helped raise more than $33,000 
for kids and need for those school supplies. What a great day that was yeah. and awesome to see it's continuing. Yeah. Really nice. Well, a major motorsports event coming back to our area. It's big and it's loud. It's the world finals for Monster Jam. Find out what this massive monster truck rally will hold in store for the Central Florida economy. Plus, starting next month, it could be a little more expensive for you to travel out of Orlando. We'll tell you about the new price increase you'll find at the airport. Troy. No, say it isn't so. We are pinpointing a new hurricane, really drawing our attention to it. It's called Florence. It's a major hurricane with winds really kicking up. It's a category three. We've got new model data on it, suggesting that it could be heading to the U.S. Could it reach us? We'll talk more about that straight ahead. You're watching News 6 at Noon getting results. We'll be right back. New at Noon, a big and loud sporting event coming to Orlando. The World Finals of Monster Jam will now call Camping World Stadium home. Mark Lehman learned about the announcement earlier today. You know, Monster Jam is no stranger to Orlando, but the World Finals coming here is a big deal. It means things here at Camping World Stadium are going to be bigger, louder, and also taking those trucks to heights no one's ever seen before. From the high revving engines to the high flying jumps. For the first time, Camping World Stadium will be host to the Monster Jam World Finals. For us to bring our premier event, our biggest event right here, we can't wait. I, honestly, I think it's going to be insane. Moving from Las Vegas, Orlando will be the first host city for the marquee event in May of 2019 as well as 2020. The World Finals is slated to crown seven champions in the Monster Jam series, but for the first time, those drivers will be entering the stadium from above the crowd, meaning record-breaking speeds. Everything starts from up top and we're coming down like gladiators. We're coming into this arena and we're going to rock the house. And the event is set to be a big economic win for Central Florida. Over $40 million are expected to be spent by the more than 100,000 fans who are getting to see the monster trucks up close. The dollars matter, but the fun is really what this is all about. F family fun, great entertainment, just a great time. Officials are expecting to sell out both days of the World Finals. Pre-sale tickets go on sale in mid-October, with tickets to the general public going on sale on November 1st. In Orlando, Mark Lehman, News 6. Starting today, Marion County Schools stepping up security at sporting events in the district. Now backpacks are banned from all football stadiums, athletic fields, gyms, even school auditoriums. Small bags will be allowed but will be searched. Handheld metal detectors may also be used. No specific reason for the change from the district, but Orange, Seminole, and Volusia counties all recently announced similar backpack bans. New at noon, commissioners in Flagler County have approved another round of air quality tests at the Sheriff's Office Operations Center. We first told you about complaints from Sheriff Rick Staley back in May. He claims workers have gotten sick and mold could be the problem. While recent tests revealed the air was safe, Staley says he wants a second opinion. The new tests will cost the county $47,000. Take you outside, live look over. Daytona Beach right now, just a gorgeous shot we'll there. Take it, yeah. yeah, it looks great. Some drier weather, all thanks to Tropical Storm Gordon, or oh, not, yeah. no longer Tropical Storm Gordon. What, what was once yeah. Tropical yeah. Storm now Gordon, Now a depression. Right? A depression. Okay. Moving on up. And, and it's <laughs> taking that moisture with it. It mm -hmm. can have it. We'll take a break, right? Mm -hmm. Sure. A little bit of rain coming down. It's light rain in most spots, and these showers we're talking about here are going to move quickly out. But here's what we're pinpointing with Gordon, a tropical depression moving and spinning right there in Mississippi and Alabama. A chance for severe storms, including numerous tornadoes there in Alabama as that weakens and continues to the north. Now, for us, we're pinpointing a few showers just now popping up, but there is some drier air in place. Place, and that will lead to a lower coverage of rain as we head through the afternoon. So the showers we're seeing now popping up and fairly quickly moving off to the west and then they're out of here. You can see the green indicating some of that light rain, a pocket or two of heavier downpours. You can see Altamont Springs, Oviedo, Belle Isle, not quite downtown Orlando, Apopka, just now popping up in areas north of there as well. Deltona, not yet, but Sanford, you're seeing a little bit of rain and that stuff just now moving off to the west of you. 
not much more except up in Flagler County, Flagler Beach, seeing a little bit of light to moderate rain and that stuff quickly moving off to the west. Now we draw our attention to a new hurricane. This is Hurricane Florence. As of today, a major hurricane, a category three with winds at 125 miles per hour, moving northwest at 13 miles per hour. Eventually by next week or early in the next week, it will uh, impact areas of Bermuda, but long range models now are indicating this thing could impact the Carolinas by late next week into next weekend. So next Friday and Saturday, we have to watch it. These are the computer models on it and it's showing it moving west and northwest. There is an area of high pressure that will help to steer it, but there's a chance again that it could move up to the Carolinas, not impacting Florida, but certainly something to watch already a major category three, but you can see the other storms we're watching out near Africa. This one along the coast of Africa with a 30% chance in the next five days. This one could get the name Helene in the next couple of days closer to the Cabo Verde Islands with a 90% chance of development within the next five. So a lot going on in the tropics as we get very close to the peak of the season coming up September 11th. So today starting off warm and a little muggy, but we'll see more of that drier air work in 85 is the temperature in Orlando right now. It's 87 in Melbourne, 87 at the villages. Here's a look at the pinpoint accurate forecast. Your forecast brought to you by Dell Air Heating and Air Conditioning. The average high is 91. We'll be close to that at 92 by 3 o'clock with only a 30% coverage of rain into the afternoon. Then making evening plans only a 10% chance. There's the clouds and rain forecast showing those showers we're seeing now push all the way over to the west into the afternoon and evening hours. One or two lingering showers tonight, but it won't last long. Mid 70s early tomorrow in most spots. And here's a look at your seven day forecast. And we'll have today with fairly dry conditions as we show you that seven day forecast. We'll show you that. There you go. You'll see that those rain chances are going to be a little bit higher as we head back into your Thursday and your Friday at 50%, 60% Friday. Guys, back to you. All right, Troy, thank you. We want to get you to some breaking news right now in Brevard County. Right now, there's a crash on I 95 between Palm Bay and West Melbourne. Now, Police tell us they believe this car involved was stolen from Melbourne. They say the suspects fled and they've been able to catch three of them, but they are looking for two more. Of course, this is a developing story. We will keep you updated as soon as we learn more information. And Tourist Overseas got a big surprise. And the video going viral will show you why coming up. But first, social media giants getting grilled by lawmakers. What this has to do with the midterm elections after this. Right now, top executives of Facebook and Twitter are facing questions from lawmakers in D.C. This morning, Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey and Facebook CEO Sheryl Sandberg answered questions from the Senate Intelligence Committee. In a little more than an hour, they'll face the House Energy and Commerce Committee. They're answering questions about preventing the spread of misinformation ahead of midterm elections come November. They're also likely to face questions about censoring conservative voices online, an accusation made by President Trump. Starting next month, expect to pay more to park at Orlando International Airport. Airport execs approved the price jump in garages A and B to $19 a day, up two bucks. Parking in the new garage C will max out at $17 a day. The airport says it's increasing the price because of higher operating and maintenance costs. It takes effect on October 1st. Still ahead, tourists get more than they bargained for at a safari park overseas. Some incredible videos going viral now. A lion climbs right in with the visitors. Look at this. Woof. And they were delighted about it. More of this video up after this. This uh, is what? video from a safari trip no in Crimea, thanks. known for getting visitors up close to the lions. And you can see they get really close. That's way there. too close. Good thing we won't be going to check that tour out. No thanks. Where's the cages on the on uh, the safari that isn't thing? Safe. Oh, I don't right know. back. Oh. 